Margie McDonald from the Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital. Margie, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Um, in your role as a certified breast health navigator, mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about what that actually means? Well, what that means is what, what we do actually is help navigate women dealing with breast cancer okay. or even breast health issues. Okay. Um, we try to get them at the point where they've been told they had an abnormal mammogram. Okay. That seems to be the time that we've identified that the woman is at that high anxiety level and really sure. needs guidance uh, as to what to do next. Okay. Now, you know, speaking about having a an abnormal mammography, there were some changes, right, over the last year in terms of guidelines and who and when they should be receiving the mammograms? Is There's that actually been no changes in the guidelines. There's been some recommendations. As um, many of us have heard, the FDA came out with a, uh, actually a report from the task force that they okay. put together that recommended that we start at age 50 instead of age 40. Okay. Um, that was a task force and um, it has not changed any of our guidelines by the American Cancer Society or even, even by the federal government themselves. Okay. So we are still sticking with starting at age 40 okay. um, and having a yearly mammogram. Okay. Now is that, um, actually, and there's two questions to ask you. One is, have you seen any changes in terms of, you know, the economy and its impact on women going for these routine screenings, even though that hasn't changed at all? We've seen a shift, I would say, in about the past year. Okay. And the two things that we do attribute it to is the economy, that women, okay. um, unfortunately, are, there's more women out there that are uninsured because they've lost their job. Right. And we suspect that these guidelines that came out, um, some women have chosen to, you know, take that advice of the task force and, okay. and delay starting their mammogram. Okay. Uh, right now, we do still encourage to start at, at age 40. Right. And does insurance typically cover routine mammographies, or yes. did that change given that recommendation from the task force, or no change at all in, in that either? Insurances have not changed at all. They're still okay. paying for uh, screening mam mammograms okay. um, at age 40. Okay. Um, and actually, there's a state law that um, was passed several years ago under um, Governor McGreevy mm -hmm. um, that um, has, um, I'm sorry, the state law um, that Governor McGreevy passed uh -huh. um, gave doctors the ability to prescribe a mammogram earlier than age 40 if they felt it was necessary due to family history or other risk factors that uh -huh. um, the doctor felt was warranted. Interesting. And, you know, the skits that we just saw a few minutes ago reflected just that. Mm -hmm. We were talking about family history and how that really does change the way a woman thinks about what her timing should be. Right, Absolutely. For her the, the recommendation if you have a first degree relative, meaning a mother, sister, okay. um, or, you know, could come from the father's side also, you could have okay. a grandmother from the father's side. We have to remember to look at the father's side too, it's very important. Right. But when you do have that relative, close relative mm -hmm. with a breast cancer, recommendation for screening sometimes is 10 years before the relative was diagnosed. So, so, so my it's mother not was about diagnosed. what the routine screening is, it's based on that on diagnosis. That family history and, and how, how uh, strong it is. Okay. Now, there are also MRIs, right, for, as, a, as a way of screening. Is it, are they now used for screening too, or is an MRI of a MRI, breast cell? When is that used? Yeah, that's a good question because it, it's controversial as to when it should be used, but okay. the guidelines are it would not be used in place of a mammogram. Okay. Um, there are um, 
reasons to have MRIs based on um, risk factors. Okay. Um, an MRI in a younger woman might show a little more than a mammogram would. Okay. Um, you know, younger women tend to have very dense breasts, and a mammogram might not show um, a lump that might otherwise be seen on an MRI. Okay. So we use it as, a, as an adjunct. Okay. okay. Now, the, um, you know, just to go back for a second to mammograms, and you were saying that you saw a bit of a dip in terms of the economy and how that may have impacted. Are there recommendations that you can make for women who are unemployed? I mean, this is a real factor, right, yeah. if our insurance isn't and, there. And we've been fortunate in our area and in the state of New Jersey. We, we have, each county has what's called a county seed program. Okay. Um, and the program does provide mammograms for women um, who meet the criteria. Okay. And the criteria is based on income and, right. and ownership of property and, and whatnot. Okay. Um, in addition to that, at Robert Wood Johnson, we've been um, awarded a grant from the Susan G. Komen Foundation. Okay. And that grant will also cover women who may not be seed eligible, but still can't afford to get that mammogram. Right. Right. And we have a, a grant that will cover 400 women in our area for that. Okay. And, you know, and that's, unfortunately, those are the things that go first, right? That when, you, when you're you making it. choices, those screenings, those screenings are mm -hmm. working. Go. Mm -hmm. um, I will be. Sh we will be sure to have a list of how folks can find out about where those seed programs are in their county on our website. Um, but I do just want to ask briefly about self-breast exams. Mm -hmm. Now, were there any changes in terms of using of women doing that first? You know, years ago we always recommended that a woman do a, a breast exam every month and do it the same time every month and right. do it after you know seven days after the start of her period if she okay. was still menstruating. Um, and a couple of years ago, American Cancer Society came out and changed the recommendation slightly by stating you need to know your breast. So my recommendation is, mm -hmm. you know, the best way to know your breast is to continue that monthly breast right, self exam. Of course. And um, we and do. And there's no cost. <laughs> there's no cost. There's no cost. You know, there's uh, you don't have to worry about having insurance to do that. Right. Um, and it is the best way, really, to know your breast. And there is right. a, a recommended method for doing the exam, and that can be found on the Susan G. Komen website okay. or the American Cancer Society website. They okay. do um, both have instructions on how to do the breast exam. Great, and we'll have a link. And to of those course, anytime well. you find something, the important thing is to make sure you bring that to your doctor. Right. Bring that information to your doctor right away. Right. And unless you're doing it routinely, you don't know that it's different. Exactly. Right. And I exactly. guess that's really the core message there. That is the core message, right. and, and you know, to know your breasts, you have to know what they were before to, right. to really understand that there's been a change, and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it's not to alarm anyone, because a lot of the changes are not going to turn out to be breast cancer, right. but it's certainly right. something that you want to make sure you get checked out. Right, right. Now, you mentioned, um, you know, I know there are, we talk about risk factors a lot here. You mentioned genetic history. Mm -hmm. Is there anything sort of a predominant risk factor that women should be aware of in the time we have left? Unfortunately, there is, and, and that is being a woman and growing older. <laughs> I'll work on those. Right, I'll try. <laughs> Two things we can't control, but those right. are the, the biggest risk, risk factors, are okay. being a woman and growing older. Your risk goes up as you, as you get older, so it's important right. to continue getting your screenings. Um, right. by and the don't time, think that I'm 75 now, I don't need to do this. Exactly. Right. If, you're, okay. if you're healthy and you're 75 years old, you should certainly be still getting your, your mammogram. Okay. Um, and then just by gender. Men I, certainly do get breast cancer, mm -hmm. but the rates are by far far, far less. less, right? Far less. Women are, okay. um, you, you know, your risk factor is one in eight across mm -hmm. your lifespan, and okay. a man may be one, in, I believe it's about one in a thousand oh, in the okay. course That's of That's quite lifespan. a difference, right, which not to minimize it in men in any way. Yes. Uh, now, I know there are some events coming up that Robert Wood is involved with in October for breast cancer awareness. Two, two major events. Um, okay. This will be our fourth annual Tied to the Cause event, okay. and our topic this year is the empowerment of choice. And we, we felt it was an important topic to cover because there are so many choices now with, with treatment, okay. with decisions um, regarding reconstruction, um, after okay. if you have to have surgery and, and a mastectomy, do I get a reconstruction, do I not? And, and they're, they're personal choices. Absolutely. And so we, we have two great speakers this year. Dr. Susan Love is a renowned um, right. surgeon in, in the breast cancer field. Okay. And she now runs her own foundation. 
Um, and Dr. Philip Way is a uh, local um, plastic surgeon who specializes okay. in breast reconstruction for um, breast cancer patients. Excellent. Well, we'll be sure to have that information on our website as well. And I know you're also very closely connected with the American Cancer Society and some of their Making Strides activities. That's a rather big event this year. Okay. Um, we're actually the first hospital to be a flagship sponsor for the American Cancer Society. Excellent. And, um, that will be on October 17th at the Woodbridge Center. Okay. Um, so we're, you know, we're trying to drum up as many walkers as we can to join Excellent. the Robert Wood team or, or, or the or American walk Cancer Society own, walk, or, yes. you know, in general. Okay. Um, but we'll be there and we're, we'll be strong and, and definitely be supporting them. Um, we actually have a great collaborative agreement with the American Cancer Society. They're in mm -hmm. our hospital. Um, they see our patients. Excellent. Um, I had an occasion of a patient who needed a wig Mm -hmm. And our representative came right in with choices for her. You know, she wanted to go home knowing what she looked like. Right. And right. came in with the choices and was able to pick out her wig at the bedside and, and went home feeling comfortable about Excellent. how she looked. Yeah. Thank you so much, Margie. I know we need quite a bit more time. Mm -hmm. And we thank you so much for your time. And we thank you for You're watching. Welcome. We'll have all of these resources online at www.middlebrookhealth.org. Thanks for watching.